I'm Roger Sikowski from WebEducator.com. In this video, I'm going to show how class, static, and abstract methods are used in Python classes. I saw Julian Danjao's article about these method types on his blog, and he agreed to let us create this video to illustrate his examples. His blog article can be read at the address shown. So now, on with the show. First, let's explore our regular run-of-the-mill method. We can use the Python class for our discussion. I've already created a script to test it uh, using Python's IDLE. Uh, let's focus on the get size method. It's declared something like a function, but it's stored as an attribute of the class. Surprise, methods are objects too. Notice it defines a parameter self. When a method is called, it uses this to bind to the class instance. Let's try running this program uh, and see what happens. I'll come over here and run the module. Well, it blows up. Not so good. We get a type error. If we look at the message, it indicates that we haven't satisfied the self parameter for the method. We can try to satisfy it. And in order to get past this error, I'll comment out the preceding line. I'll save this script and we'll try running it again. This time, we get an answer. The reason for it is that we've now passed, or at least bound, the instance of the class to its attribute method. Now, we might ask ourselves at this point, uh, are all methods required uh, to have a self-parameter? Uh, even if they don't use the objects that contain them at all. Well, that actually brings us to another flavor of method called a static method. Sometimes you'll write a method that belongs to a class, but that doesn't actually use the object itself. In the example, in the Python IDLE, uh, we define our pizza class, and it has two methods. Cook is a regular Python method, while mix ingredients is a static method. Let's consider the cook method first. Uh, it requires a self-parameter. Uh, each instance of pizza will require a new instance of cook. We can prove this by comparing the method objects by running the first statement I have here in the shell. And I'll do that. The result is false, meaning that, in fact, cook, uh, that one uh, instance of cook is not equal to the other instance of cook. Right. Uh, so we have two different instances. Now, let's turn our attention to the mixed ingredients method. It's given the static method declarator. Uh, you can see it with the at sign in the very beginning. As a result, we're free to eliminate the self-parameter. If mix ingredients were not static, uh, the program would work just fine. But then it would require that self-parameter. Uh, uh, seeing as how the method doesn't use it, it would really be just a waste. So by making the method static, we gain a few nice advantages. First, Python doesn't have to instantiate a bound method for each instance of pizza. When we do the same comparison using mixed ingredients method, where one reference is from an instance and the other is from a class, we'll get the following result. And I have that in this line right here. So let me uncomment that and comment this one. Let's run, save it first. And now let's run it in the shell. 
And what we see now is that the result is true. Uh, that we're dealing with a single instance of a method. It's not independent or it's not being generated for each instance of pizza. Obviously, we have only then one ingredient method. Uh, we can try even using two instances of pizza. Uh, in the next example, we'll do exactly that. Let me comment this guy out and I'll uncomment this statement. Now, I'll save that and let's run that in the shell. And you can see I still get the same answer. I'm winding up with true. And third, well, second, <laughs> it's the second advantage uh, is that the static method declaration is kind of a form of, uh, of documentation. Um, it indicates that a method doesn't depend on the object state that it's, uh, that it's uh, defined in. Third, it allows us to override the mixed ingredients method in a subclass. Uh, consider this, if we had created it as a function uh, at the top level of our module, uh, a class that would inherit pizza wouldn't be able to change the way things are mixed. Uh, rather, it would have to override the cook method. By making it a member of pizza, uh, we gain the advantage and can leverage polymorphism more efficiently. A third type of Python method is a class method. It's a method that isn't bound to an object, but to the class itself. The first argument to the method will be the class itself. Uh, here's an example uh, I've entered in the IDLE. The fridge class contains a few variables representing items that might be used to make a pizza, or the amount of items, rather, that might be used to make a pizza, for the sake of example. Um, I just named them one and two. The real focus is in the pizza class below. Our pizza class, we have a method called from fridge declared. It's a class method. We know that because of the declaration saying class method. That's uh, part of its declaration. That tells Python that the method is bound to a class and not an instance of the class. The CLS uh, is the class pizza itself. Uh, it should be noted that classes are objects too, so CLS represents the object that is in fact the pizza class. We use the, uh, the data from the fridge instance, and we add them together uh, to perform some kind of pre-processing. And we use the result to create instances of the pizza. Uh, that's what we return uh, from this class, from this method. When we run the module, which I'll do right now, on the module, what we see is two results. Uh, P1 is returning 25 as the number of ingredients, whereas P2 is returning 75 as the number. Clearly, we have two different instances. The from fridge method was used. This is really an example of a factory pattern. It's a common use for a class method. Uh, we can let it do all the pre-processing that, that a class might require and requir return instances of that class efficiently. Uh, it's also a flexible strategy that complements inheritance. Classes that inherit pizza are free to use from fridge as well. The fourth type of Python method is an abstract method. It's a method that's declared, uh, but it really has no implementation. Uh, we can see that in our get type method that's declared in our base pizza class. Now, we can't actually do anything with this class. If we attempt an instantiation of it, let's try to do that. I'll just copy a statement or two and paste it here just so that you don't have to watch me type it. And I'm going to save it and then let's run it in the shell. What I can see in the shell is that 
I'm getting a not implemented error. That's because I can't instantiate a class with an abstract method in it. Now, let's add to this example uh, a subclass. And once again, I will just copy a subclass in. And we'll put it right here. Now, I have a class pizza, and it inherits our base class. Notice that it has a get ingredients method, and it just simply adds one to whatever it is we feed the pizza to begin with. Uh, so it's not a real important method. It's just there for demonstration purposes. But let's try to create a pizza. So in my next example, I'm going to create a pizza, copy that statement, paste it in, and let's give this a run. Or save it, and then run it. Strangely enough, when we look at the shell, we can see that, yes, in fact, it really did instantiate, and it also produced a result, and the expected result at that. So the rule that we had established, that a subclass must, in fact, override the method in the superclass, um, really didn't seem to make any sense here. Well, the fact is, is that the way Python treats it is that it will, in fact, cause an error if we tried to make a call to that abstract method. Now, once again, let's give this a run now that I've pasted in the abstract method call. And we can see in the shell that I get the answer for our get ingredients method as expected, just as before. But now when I make a call for that to that abstract method, I do in fact get the same kind of error that we had before when we tried to instantiate the base pizza, namely a non-implemented error. Now, this actually presents a little bit of a problem to us. This sort of thing, uh, the way it's returning this error and the way that it's, uh, it's finding it, uh, can really be tough when it comes to doing any debugging. It would be a lot better if we could shove the error to the front of the instantiation process uh, and not worry about whether or not we have to make explicit calls to explicit methods. The way we can do it is by using the ABC module, and I'm going to re- define our base class a little bit. And let me paste a new definition. Now our definition here imports the ABC module. You can see that we're setting it up so that the base pizza class uh, uses the ABC metadata. Uh, and we use the defined annotation, well, decoration, uh, abc.abstractMethod, in order for us to label this as truly an abstract method. Now, when we try to run our program with that change, let's see what our result is now. Now, I not only get an error upon instantiation of pizza, so P1 didn't even get instantiated. But if I were to look at the actual error message, it's not that plain not implemented error, but rather it's telling me that it can't instantiate the abstract method in pizza, uh, and it's telling me what method I need to, in fact, in, uh, override. So let's do that. Uh, let's override that method. and see what we can do with it. So I'm going to insert a new method into pizza. And 
And that's our overriding of the get type. Now, I'm going to attempt to run both of those statements again. And we'll run it in the module one more time. This time, I can see that the output is correct. The overridden method satisfies the need of a subclass to override the parent class. And with ABC, I get the added advantage of being able to check whether the class does its job at instantiation rather than waiting until I actually make a call to the method. Now, that's one of the major advantages of ABC. All right. Now, in the last bit, in our discussion of methods uh, that are associated with classes, um, we know that there are four basic types. We have a simple type of method, which is really a named bundle of statements that uh, Python uses. We have a static method that contains behavior that's not dependent on the state of the class defining it. We have a class method, and that one is used often for us to instantiate objects that require pre-processing, where the instantiation process might be, in fact, a bit more complex than, than uh, simple instantiation. And lastly here, we have an abstract method that forces classes that are inheriting it, uh, that are inheriting a class in which the abstract method is defined, to override that method and supply their specialized behavior for that purpose. An example might be creating a pizza now that will return square rather than round, um, thereby having pizzas of different shapes. Armed with these variations of methods, uh, classes can realize the basic principles of object-oriented programming and all the flexibility that it brings to development in general. Once again, thanks to Julian for his inspiration for this video. Check out his blog at the URL shown here for other articles related to Python.